input output and the EC oscillator. So let's comment that. So uh, I'm going to make this a two line comment. So, in other words, we're going to use the internal clock, pin number 14. There we go. Which is also RA6. If we refer to our circuit diagram, you can see that OSC 1 and 2, these are the two pins that you would connect an external clock to if you were using an external clock, which we're not. So pin 14, RA6, with the setting we're choosing, we could use as an input-output pin. So pin number 14, which is also RA6, as an I.O. pin. And pin number 13 is unused. And we also, here we want to note that if the OSCON register and I'm going to get into uh, registers in more detail in the second video with the I.O. demo board. But um, for now, all we really need to know is that if the OSCON register is left as the default, the clock speed will be 1 megahertz, which is more than fast enough for the lead blinking application we're going to do today. Now, for the remaining options, which are substantially less confusing than the clock options, I'm going to fast forward the video at this point because there's so many to type in. But to make a long story short, uh, if anything is unclear, see my comments. If that doesn't make it clear, see either the data sheet, 18F4550 data sheet, or this list here and hopefully it'll make it more or less clear or at least clear enough. Um, but basically the idea is this. For all these things, code protection, write protection, if you're not sure what it is, you probably want to turn it off. That's really your safest bet. So let's enter all those options now. Okay, so that completes our chip config settings. Now we can get on to something that will look more like you would think a typical C program would look that you might be used to. So we're going to start with pound include. And the file we're going to include is lowercase p18 lowercase f 4550.h. That will tell the C18 compiler uh, what options to use throughout the rest of the program. Next we're going to have one function in this program. It's called it's going to be called delay. So just like any other C program, we need function prototypes. And we're going to comment line over for readability and void delay. Let's just call it delay. Now, one thing I will say about the C18 compiler is a lot of compilers like the Microsoft Visual C++ compiler, for example, you could not include that void there and it would make no difference. This compiler is substantially more sensitive to that. You always want to include the void in the brace there. Otherwise, it'll start giving you errors about no function prototype and so on. So now we're ready to write function main. So basically, we're going to have, uh, we have to set up our tri-state register for uh, port B and that'll be four statements and then we're going to have an infinite loop that essentially turns the LED on and off and then delays long enough for us to see it. So here's how we're going to do that. First we'll have a comment line. 
then regular old void main void now for the different registers in the chip um, we can refer to those with names in our code here and how you would know which registers to refer to by name is there's two ways one is the data sheet so let's take a look at that and the uh, register we're going to start with is the tris register that's tri-state register which determines whether uh, certain pins on certain ports are input or output and we're specifically interested in the tris b register so for example if we type tris b in the data sheet and let's go down one more here's the special function registers map so there's a register at this location within the microcontroller that the internal circuitry will check and then depending on the state of that the microcontroller will either make the corresponding pins of port B input or output and if we continue on in the data sheet in this section here IO ports it gets into port A port B and so on you can see these sections of the data sheet for more detail. Another option is if we go to uh, where the C18 compiler was installed, which on my particular computer is going to be program files, you'll have to check your install location, it might be a little bit different, but it'll probably be something at least similar to program files, microchip, MPLAB C18 version 3.4 and then dot H so what you're going to want to do is now you're going to want to navigate to the p18f4550 dot H file and there we go p18f4550 dot H and you're going to want to copy this file right click and drag and copy it don't make sure you don't move it out to your desktop because then it won't be there for the compiler to use anymore. Then you'll have this file on your desktop to refer to. Now that's going to be invaluable to you because if you open that with something like uh, Notepad, WordPad, whatever you prefer. Whoops, let me do that. This is the .h file that the MPLAB C18 compiler actually uses to go through your code and check on what you've written and how it corresponds to the different registers. So here we see all the different registers that there are. So the UIR register we'd refer to as UIR bits. Or we could refer to it as UIR if we wanted to do the entire register. And so on for all these different registers. So for example, I'll press Control F here to do a search. We're looking for the Tris B register. So if we type in Tris B to me there. So here we are, Tris B. So we could refer to the entire register as Tris B or to the individual bits of it as Tris B bits dot and then either Tris B0, Tris B1, Tris B2, or RB012, etc. So here's what we're going to do in code to set the port pins. RB, remember what we're trying to do going back to our diagram is we're trying to set these pins here, RB0, 1, 2, and 3, to output so that we can blink these LEDs. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to type Tris B bits dot Tris B zero is assigned. Now a zero will set that pin, the RB zero pin. In this case of our particular chip here, that's pin 33. A zero will set that to output, whereas a one will set it to input. So let's comment that. So set RB zero to output. And then to make life easy on ourselves, we'll copy that same statement. And then we'll also do the same thing for the other three LEDs. So trisb bits dot trisb one, trisb two, and trisb three. We're going to set all those to zero. So that's going to set RB zero one two and three all to output. So at this point we've set these three pins here, pins 33, 34, 35, and 36 to output so we can blink our LEDs. <clears throat> now the next thing that we're going to do, that's it for the configuration really, so now we're ready for the actual while loop that infinitely blinks the LEDs. So since we want to loop forever, we're going to type while 1 and then we're going to type 
uh, port B bits. So, for example, you could refer to the register that actually commands a microcontroller to set these the output state of these pins with the command port B. So we're going to type port B bits dot RB zero, and that's going to set it is assigned a one. So that's going to apply 5 volts, if we go back to our diagram, to pin 33, which is RB0, which will be sufficient to turn on LED0. So let's comment that, turn on LED0. Okay, then we're basically going to do the same thing three more times here, so to make life easy on ourselves, let's copy and paste it. So we're going to turn on LED 1, 2, and 3. And to do that, we're going to set port B bits dot RB 0, 1, 2, and 3 all to 1. So now the LEDs uh, will be on. So the next thing we need to do is we need to call our delay function to pause with the LEDs on for just a moment so that our eyes can see the LED turning on and off. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn the LEDs off and pause for just a moment. So again, to make life easy on ourselves, we'll copy and paste. So we're going to have port bits.rb0, but now we want to turn it off. So we'll make that a 0, and the other three the same. And so that's going to be turn off LEDs 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then of course we call our delay function again to pause for just a moment while the LEDs off. And that's going to end our while loop, and that will end function main. Now all that's left is to write our delay function. So I'll add a comment line to make the readability a little better. And then we're going to do void delay void. Again, don't forget the second void. And we'll have two variables and i and j. And we're going to do for i is assigned 0, while i is less than 1,000, i++. plus plus. That'll be our outer loop. Then for our inner loop, we're going to type for j is assigned 0, while j is less than 2, j++. Plus plus. Let's put a comment in here, delay, and then we're going to end the inner for, and end the outer for, and end the function. And then save and compile, and see if we made any typos or not. I must have made a typo somewhere. Uh, let's see. Pragma config. Oh, I accidentally typed config twice here. And so if we do a compile again, did I make any more typos? No, I didn't. Build succeeded. So let's go back to the folder where we created all the project uh, files in before. So if let's just go back to the desktop, double click the folder, there we go. So you recall before there were the two project files and then one other. Now there's more here. Um, so the, the development environment internally uses these COF files and the O file uh, for the managing the environment and the compilation process and all that. We don't need to worry about that. The two other files that weren't here before that we do need to keep an eye out on are that we should take a look at are this C file here. Of course we created that. You'll probably remember that when we first created the project. The next thing we did was we created the C file and then typed in our code. And the last file that's especially important to us is this hex file. This is the file that's the actual machine code that we're going to using either the picket 2 or the picket 3 that we're going to load into the 18F4550. So once this file is created, we're now ready to do that, and that's our next step.